Hello. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the gift you've given us, the gift of Jesus. And with that, with the grace and the, the mending and the healing, Lord, that we get. Lord, I ask you to, to open up our hearts, Lord, and let us hear what Pastor Jeff has for us through you, Lord. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm grateful. Um, I was kind of murmuring a little bit earlier today, and my mentor, my pastor, my bishop, Bishop Earl, he says, well, you ain't got nothing to complain about. You shouldn't be here anyway. And that really rang true. I shouldn't. I should have OD'd. I should be dead. I've OD'd before. I've done a lot of dope, heroin, crack, meth. And, um, you know, so that put things in perspective to me. Um, I was watching this movie for the second time last night, um, and, and something, it's about a recovering addict, and it stood out to me. The guy said, you're addicted to your feelings. I want you to think about that for a second. Being addicted to your feelings and really applying your feelings to the 12 steps, not just grabbing meth or coke or heroin or benzos or you know opiates or gambling or sex um, into the 12 steps because the reason why you use because you weren't feeling that great but also sometimes we use when we're feeling great you know no matter what you didn't have to prompt me to use I got high every day so being addicted to our emotions and not knowing how to manage our emotions when we see something or feel something that makes us feel a certain way I believe that addiction number one is a love deficiency because I couldn't have loved myself or my family if I was buying something that was killing me. And I wasn't just buying it, I was emptying out my bank accounts. I wasn't just emptying out my bank accounts, I was robbing, stealing, and selling drugs to support it. Now, I did love my children, but my actions didn't dictate because I was a <clears throat> addicted to my feelings. If I got angry, I got high. If I was afraid, I got high. You would never admit, because I was so tough, that I was afraid, and you, you tell you, you go to the jails, you'll see fear straight up. You'll see grown men masquerading their fear with pride. And I had to get kicked in the butt to realize that, that I really don't have a clue. And I was addicted to loneliness, addicted to self-pity, um, addicted to anger, addicted to resentment. And I was really addicted to my feelings. So if I take my feelings um, through the 12 steps, um, I admitted I was powerless on how I feel. I mean, think about it. You can be having the best day ever and all of a sudden you feel angry. Where did that anger come from? Or you, you, you can just get a job and all of a sudden you're not grateful. You know, so these feelings come on us and, and we don't know what to do with them. So we got to take our feelings through the 12 steps, especially at this time of year. You're, you're thinking about the past, you're getting around people that you maybe haven't seen, you don't know how they feel about you. So because you don't know how they feel about you, it affects your feelings. And you really want to operate in God's grace within that realm, powerless over my feelings, and my feelings have made my life extremely unmanageable. My feelings manage my life. See, it doesn't say in the 12 steps, practice our feelings in all of our affairs. It says practice these principles. So how do you feel what, what, what the therapist and the psychiatrist and psychologist, I love them all, I need them all. But at the end of the day, what they taught me about feelings, they're not right or wrong, they're just yours. So, I mean, if, if, if um, Keith is feeling a certain way and he tells me what he's feeling, um, it's right to Keith, but I'd say, I don't think I'd feel that way about that but it's so true to him. See, you gotta, you gotta really decipher your truth from the truth. Because your feelings when you see something or hear something will make you feel a certain way and then your truth will change. And if you live like that, it's gonna be a long road. Now, none of us are perfect, I get like that. So you came to believe that a power greater than yourself could restore you to sanity. Where is the insanity? In your feelings. Made a decision to turn your will and your life over to the care of God. Step three, as you understand him. Um, so I'm going to turn my feelings over to you. How do I turn my feelings over to God? Well, I got to apply the word of God. I got to take every thought that makes me feel captive and make it obedient to Christ in order to live by principle. And then I got to analyze where
where my feelings got me in my fourth step. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of myself. Where did my feelings, where did they end up in resentment? Where did they end up in fear? And then admit to God, yourself, and another human being the exact nature of your wrongs. Um, how did my feelings make me wrong people, including me? And then we became entirely ready to have God say, God, God. remove our defects of character. These feelings affect my character. They don't just effect my character. They infect yeah. my character. Humbly ask God, step seven, to remove our shortcomings. These feelings, they take me out of jobs. They take me out of relationships. They take me out of promotions. They take me out of families. They make me feel a certain way, so I run and I quit and I get angry and I, I throw a, a temper tantrum at 35 years of age, 40 years of age. A grown man with little boy issues, that's who I was. Because of these feelings. These feelings that I don't know how to manage. And, and, and now, step eight and nine, you, you want to really make a list of how your feelings have hurt people. Now you hear the age old saying, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. You don't want a piece of my mind when I'm in my feelings. If everybody said, anybody ever says they want to give you a piece of their mind, say, I'd rather not take a piece of your mind. So these feelings, they create a list of people that we need to make amends to, and then we got to go and make direct amends to all people we had harmed, except here's where a lot of people fail miserably. They, they, there's already been harm done, so they want to harm more. That's not the ninth step. If you did something wrong, you don't want to create any more harm. Just own it, repent from it, and move on with your life. So these feelings make us wrong people, and then continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong for feeling a certain way, Promptly admit it, man, I'm angry with you, and I don't like being angry with you. I'm afraid, I'm this, I'm that, I'm confused. I, this ain't right, this ain't God. God is not the, the author of confusion. He's not a God of disorder. So sought through prayer and meditation, step 11, to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will and the power to carry it out. So God, how can I get close to you so I don't live by how I feel? Your will has nothing to do with my feelings. But in order to get out of my feelings and live in your will, I need your power to do it. And it says in step 12, having had a spiritual awakening, well, what's mine regarding feelings? My feelings have got me incarcerated, high, homeless, living in hotels, $20 a night hotels. That was one of the great, my dad, who was just here, he had a private detective looking for me, and he went to a hotel, a motel, a um, no-tell, that nobody would, would talk about. And the only thing they sold at the front desk was lighters. That's not a good motel. So having had a spiritual awakening, then my feelings have gotten me locked up. As a result of working the steps over my feelings, I tried to carry the message to you tonight. I can't carry you. I can carry a message to you. And to practice these principles over my feelings in all my affairs. Let's give God a hand. I'm grateful that you showed up tonight. We just went through a powerful anointed service for Christmas Eve with the church. And um, I talked quickly about unwrapping the gift. And I want to preface that before we um, pass the baskets and, and, and watch a video because um, he, God he took me here at 1 a.m. last night. Um, I already had another message prepared. And I came here and redid the message. And, and he titled it, Unwrapping the Gift. See, I, I, I'm giving a lot of gifts throughout the year because God has blessed me. And when you think about the gift of Jesus, I mean, if you give a gift, one of the greatest joys of giving a gift is watching somebody unwrap it. A lot of us have given the gift of recovery that we've never unwrapped. We have sobriety, but we don't have recovery. You know, so, so God gets us sober, but we don't know how, to, know how to recover from the thing that made us use. And now, um, um, we don't unwrap the gift of the steps or a sponsor or anything like that. So I just, I just want to express, um, is there anyone new for the first time here tonight? If you're new, stand up. Let's give these people, if there's anyone new. Anyone new? Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. I appreciate it. God bless you. Whatever we have, you're welcome to participate in. We're a family here. We do believe in the we of the program. So as we pass the baskets and watch this video, I'm challenging you. Um, you know, there was time, I'll never forget. Someone stole, um, it was way back in the day before Xboxes or anything else. I don't even know what the gaming system was. 
But anyways, I think it was after Atari, but, but they stole it, and then they got some dope from me for it. And then I was planning on giving it to my kids, who at the time were like three and five, for Christmas. But by the end of the run, I was out of dope and money, even though I was selling dope. So those, my kids never got that, and the other dope man got the system. I remember buying $20 gift cards for my wife at the time. 20 bucks. And that was a stretch when you're doing crack. And, 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 and I was going to give it to her for gas because I was MIA for Christmas. I, no, she never got that $20 gift card. So a lot of us on a night like this were stuck. And we were spending money on the devil. So as we pass the baskets tonight, I'm asking you to contribute. Please watch the video. It's simple, just love them. You hear me say it all the time, you gotta love the hell out of people. Because when I came in these rooms, I had a lot of hell in me. And someone had to love the hell out of me. And, and I think about that, um, they teach us it's a simple program for complicated people. And as I talked about unwrapping the gift in the previous service a moment ago, I want to talk to you tonight about the pain of birthing a new life. If you think you were in pain in your addiction, you don't know what pain is. The pain that you have to walk through, I don't mean, to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and I don't mean to freak anybody out, but the pain that you need to walk um, through in recovery is a fierce pain. And I want you to think about it for a second. Because um, when we were using, we medicated our pain. Now, I just had, I mean, I got a lot of dental problems. I smoked a lot of crack. So, so I, over the last 15 years, I can't take pain pills. So when I have a dental problem, and I've had a lot lately, um, I can't, and it is painful. Painful, and I don't have a painkiller to relieve the pain. So I had to figure out a different way to process my pain. So, Lord, I thank you for another day above ground and out of prison. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. I ask forgiveness of all the things that are in me that are not of you. I receive the forgiveness. Lord, I ask for a 100-fold blessing over the men and women that chose to come tonight. I ask that you bless them from the head to the toes. That you bless them with only things you can bless them with. That they came here tonight on a, on a time that they typically wouldn't come. There's a million excuses not to be here. But they came hungry. Lord, fill us, because we're hungry for you. In your name we pray, amen. amen. So I want to talk to you about this pain of giving birth. Um, uh, let's applaud the women that have had children. Now, I've seen 
women have children. I've watched them, you know, have the babies and different things of that nature. Um, I was in the room for two of my children. And um, um, let me tell you something. If I was pregnant, I'd be in the ER every night. <laughs> I am so grateful that women are so strong. I mean, I'm, I'm type, typically a hypochondriac, you know, I mean, and stuff of that nature. If I had something moving around in my belly, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> so let's give the women another round of applause. So, so women, women can talk about this pain that have had babies. It, it's nothing nice. I mean, it's crazy up in that delivery room and, 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 and all those things. But, but there's signs that you're about ready to give birth. And, and I want to tell you something. There, you, God wants to birth something in and through you. And in order to birth a new life, you're going to have to walk through the pain, and you're going to have to realize that pain serves a purpose. Now, in my addiction, pain didn't serve much of a purpose. My pain caused more pain. And now, in recovery, my pain serves a purpose. And in Matthew 24, pain always comes before birth. If God's going to birth a new life in you, it's going to be painful. I wanna, I'll prove it to you now. It's painful to do a fourth step. It's painful to look at yourself, to look at your resentments and your fears. It's painful to admit to another person that you're afraid, that you have resentments. In step five, it's, it's painful to do amends. Amends are not to say I'm sorry. Amends is what can I do to make this wrong right? They are tired of hearing we're sorry. So you have to understand, you're going to have to walk through the pain, and, and, and pain always comes before birth, and these are the beginning of birth pains. How many people are in pain? Emotional pain, physical pain, mental pain. You're all your hands should go up. Don't tell me you ain't in pain. See, that, that's not a bad thing. It feels bad. See, the things, are, the things that used to feel good were actually bad for us. So now the things that feel bad, we don't recognize that they're good. So this pain is good, even though it doesn't feel good. And it says in Mark 13, the pain of things coming against you. I mean, I have never had so much opposition. Now, I can sit back in my self-pity, pout, and murmur, and complain, and forget where I came from in my crack addiction. But at the end of the day, um, there are so many things coming against me right now, people, places, things. They just want to harm. And you have to understand, that's going to cause pain. And it's going to make you want to go street on something. But why would you be that foolish in your pain to go street on something to end up in jail? I mean, I'm not going to give somebody that much satisfaction, even though my flesh wants to do it, say it, or whatever. But, but, but when you're about ready to burst something, I know there's something big coming because I'm in a lot of pain. And there's a lot of stuff coming against us and I've been doing this long enough to understand the devil's trying to keep us from something that God is ready to bring to us. And if you have that mindset, it alleviates the pain. It's kind of a painkiller all by itself. And the Bible's saying now against nations, kingdom, against the kingdom, there will be earthquakes. Man, in 2019, man, there's been so many problems. The earth shook. But we're still here. I don't want to run back to the dope house. Dope house ain't my friend. I mean, the streets are changing out there. And I'm, I'm hearing some crazy stuff going down. It was crazy back 15 years ago. And the famines, I mean, there's been ups, downs, and all arounds in my recovery this year. Things come against you. It's going to cause emotional pain. It's going to want you to quit. It's going to make you want to lash out. It's going to make you want to say something, do something. But at the end of the day, you've got to walk through this pain like a man or a woman. And you've got to practice principle, not feeling. When you practice principle not feeling, you, you, know, you can't let your truth be altered. If you know your truth, if it's with someone or something, and you see something and, and it, it, it alters your truth, it was never true to begin with. Because there's always something to alter the truth. So, so we have to understand, things are going to come against us. Job 6, the pain of being honest with yourself. That's painful. Man, I'm a dope fiend in the flesh. I'm free in the spirit. But Freddie ain't dead. Give me the wrong situation and the wrong feeling, I'm going to be lighting up, shooting up. I'll never say I'll never get high again, because I said that all the time through my 11 treatments. I could be high tonight, especially this time of year, where I spent the majority of my incarcerations or treatments or detoxes between Halloween and probably 
the end of January. There's some about this time of year I can't process pain. I am. I got mental stuff going on too. Highs and lows. Don't tell me no addict ain't got no bipolar going on. We go real low and we go real high. And at the end of the day, don't be ashamed of it. Just get treated for it. Talk about it and different things of that nature. But it's painful to be honest with yourself and others. It's painful to say, man, if I get high, I die. It's painful to say, hey, family, I can't be here on Christmas Eve. I got to go to my meeting. They're not going to understand. It's going to be painful. They didn't understand when you were shooting heroin. They ain't going to understand why you got to go to a meeting on Christmas Eve either. But you need to understand it. And you need to know that it's painful, but, but arguments were, it's painful to sit. I mean, you don't listen, or I, I, try, I, I try not to say this about myself anymore, but sometimes it's true. We listen to ourselves more than anybody else. I want you to think about the conversations you have with yourself about yourself and the life you live. I mean, just really analyze those discussions you're having with yourself. We, it's painful to realize I need to stop arguing with myself. I need to stop living that clash song, should I stay or should I go? I need to, I got to make a decision as a man and live by principle. No matter what and how I feel, what it looks like or what they do or what they say or what they don't do or what they don't say, I'm going to be here. And I've made that commitment for 15 years. And it's been very painful. It's been very painful. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to argue with myself. Whatever my sponsor, pastor, bishop says, I'm going to do. I've been doing it for 15 years, and I have a pretty good life because of it. I don't fully understand it. Jeremiah 3.15, the Bible says that God will give you shepherds after his own heart. I know who my man is that I follow. Paul says to Timothy, follow me, follow Christ. I got here because I couldn't straighten it out up here. I didn't have a good track record, so I needed to follow another man that was going in the direction I want. If you want what they have, do what they do. And you're not going to understand why you got to do it. But, but, but it says now, if you're going to, the pain of being honest with yourself, and I'm not going to argue with people. It ain't going to happen. People want to argue with me all the time. And I said, I'm not going to argue with you. Your truth is different than my truth. Let's respect each other's individual truths and go on our merry ways. And I leave and they're still arguing with me. And eventually I get far enough away and they're still trying to argue with me. And now they're arguing with themselves and then they become really tired. Either they go to sleep or try to argue with someone else. See, the pain of being honest with yourself, Job, the pain of restlessness. Have you ever watched a woman that was about ready to give birth? They're really agitated. They're irritated. They're restless. See, when God starts to birth something in you, you get real restless. You want to run. You want to quit. You can't stand still. When you can't stand still, you got to stay still. See, when you're ready to birth something in the kingdom, and it's not just like birthing peace or, or victory. I mean, you can be ready to birth a new company. We birthed a lot of companies this year. See, see, right before it happened, that's what I loved about this movie, um, right as he got almost to the next level, his past showed up. So you got to understand, right when you're on the verge of something great, something bad is going to happen. And it's going to make you feel real restless. Say restless. restless. Job 16, the pain of exposure. You're going to have to expose how you feel. You know, I mean, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be almost wrong to say some days that you don't feel like getting high, because you do. There's nothing wrong in your flesh. You're a junkie like me. Like, I mean, I almost giggle when people come and tell me some of the things they do. Women get real tripped up. And when I go, we were at prison on um, Thursday night speaking at a prison fellowship graduation, one of the greatest honors ever. But, I mean, women come here, men come here all the time. I just got out of the joint. I said, that's awesome. Because if you're anything like Paul, Paul was the worst of the worst, and God turned him into the best of the best. But how can you get to the worst to the best? Pain. You've got to walk through the pain to get to your best. You can't avoid the pain. So, so exposure, um, when I speak, my pain is not relieved. I'm talking in group, and I still feel the same. I'm not talking in group, I still feel the same. This pain is making me restless. This pain is making me want to lash out. And, and there are really signs that something is about ready to get birth in you. Hebrews 12, the pain of discipline. I want you to think about how disciplined you were with alcohol. You had a strategy with that crack. 
You knew exactly who you were going to meet to get it, how you were going to get the money when you didn't have any, where you were going to meet the heroin dealer, what were you going to do to move that meth. You had a strategy. We were disciplined in the streets. Very disciplined. And you got to be disciplined in these rooms. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Say painful. painful. It's, I'm going to say, sucks. I was going to say stinks, but I said sucks. Whatever. But um, it sucks to be corrected as a man. But Because I used to take correction as rejection. And now I take correction as redirection. I, I need to be redirected in my thinking in the pain. Discipline is painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. You've got to be trained in your pain. The pain trains. And the, the pain will put you on a train to take you to the next level. I love what it says there. I just absolutely love it, that, that this discipline that I needed to learn. Psalm 38, the pain of physical, man, your body's going to scream. You know, it, it just drives me crazy when I hear a brother tell me he's tired and he can't go to the meeting. You were no way too tired to smoke crack or go to the liquor store or get that meth. Man, you, you'd crawl on your hands and knees to get that hit. Couldn't even put that pipe up to your mouth. Couldn't find that vein. Boy, you were disciplined. Couldn't find that. Couldn't get that alcohol to your body. Because that was DTs. Discipline. Restlessness. But I still used. See, when you get restless in these rooms, you've got to stay in these rooms. When you don't want to learn discipline in these rooms, you've got to learn discipline in these rooms. And it goes on to say here, so, so, I mean, these physical ailments, man, I'm tired. I mean, I mean, what if I would have told God last night at 1 a.m., I'm tired, I'm not going to change the sermon. We wouldn't have had the service we just had. Because it ain't about me. It ain't about me. When I was getting high, it was about me. It was about me, and then all my family got destroyed. My family got destroyed because it was about me. And then it says in Psalm 38, the pain of fear of falling that, it, you know, when you're ready to burst something, you're like, oh, it's too good to be true. Oh, this impending doom I got, or the other shoe's eventually going to... Because I'm a sabotage artist. I mean, anytime I get close to good, I do bad. So at the end of the day, the pain of the fear of falling. Like, man, I mean, I, I think this thing ain't going to work anyway, so I'm going to go dismantle it. Think about how many times we've done that. And then it says, that I'm about to fall, and my pain is ever with me. That's true. Your pain is always going to be with you. That's why when I loved ones die, it's not fun, but I'm in so much pain already that it's just, it is what it is. I mean, this pain that I have to, and, and all of us have to walk in is great. So ways to induce labor and relieve the pain. If you have given birth to a baby or saw a woman give birth to a baby, um, sometimes they have to induce um, the woman and the baby to give delivery. Sometimes God has to induce us, and, and God will give us pain relievers. There's ways to relieve the pain of birthing a new life. Isaiah 26, invite God's presence into your pain. See, uh, at the end of the day, I invited crack into my pain. I invited meth into my pain, benzos into my pain, Vicodin into my pain, sex into my pain. I invited all those things into my pain, and, and now, now, now that I don't have those things, why won't I invite God into my pain? And it says a pregnant woman about to give birth, check this out, and cries out. With it. Somebody's got to hear you cry, man. I'm in a lot of pain, man. I'm in a lot of pain right now. Somebody's got to know about your pain. God's got to know about your pain. When you, where two or three are gathered, then God is in our midst. That's the we of the program. You know, tell somebody, not everybody, about your pain, and then you will experience the presence of the Lord. James 1.8, invite the word of God into your pain. He says, he chose to give us birth through his word. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.12 that the word of God is alive and active. I mean, it's, it's a medicator to the pain. And it might be the kind of first fruits. So I invite the word in, 
into my pain. I say, consider it pure joy when I face trials of many kinds. I speak over my haters. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that wants to hate on me shall be condemned. I bring the word into my pain. I bring the word into every area of my pain. That's my pain reliever. That, that's going to induce the latter is going to be greater than the former. That he who began a good work in me and you will complete it. When I think all hell is breaking loose, I tell hell, hell no. And I tell hell that he started something and he promised me he was going to finish. So I'm going to stay right here. So you bring the word of God into your pain. Titus 3.5, invite the Holy Spirit into your pain. He saved us not because of the righteous things we have done. No one, none of us got here tonight because we were good. <laughs> and I was good at smoking crack, maybe, but <laughs> that was really bad. We got here because he's good. He's not just good. He's awesome. Yeah. Say God is awesome. God is awesome. <laughs> so he says that because of his mercy, so the same mercy that got you out of the dope house is the same mercy you got to tap into in these rooms. I mean, if God could have got a drug addict like me running, selling crack and everything else that went with that lifestyle, if he could do that, he can handle a little headache, a heartache, oh, they don't love me or whatever, they're not paying attention to me or they won't let me see the kids or I'm not going to get the job because of my felony record. No, no, if God can get a dope fiend like me out of the dope house, he can handle a job. So it says, he saved us through the washing of the rebirth of the renewal of the Holy Spirit. So where are you at tonight with this pain? Some of you are in emotional pain. I mean, I, I don't really like this time of year. It's just not my thing. But I got to live it. I got to go through it. So, so, so some of us are in physical pain. Um, our heart hurts and different things. Not, not because your arm hurts, but maybe your heart is hurting tonight. You don't have back what you once lost. And, and I always challenge that. I mean, stay here until God restores it because I had to be honest with myself, which was painful. I get sober and go through all those treatment centers, and I ran away from my family to get high. Now, then I ran back to the very thing I ran from, but I wasn't ready yet because they were still in a lot of pain. I was in pain, they were in pain, they couldn't let go of things. What did I do? I went back to the crack house to medicate my pain. And I say it all the time to men and women in the room, I'm one of them, that the fact is, like, you got so many consequences that are causing pain, so then we can't face the consequences and consider a pure joy and face the, the trial of many kinds to build endurance to handle actually more pain. But at the end of the day, um, what we do is we can't handle what the consequences we have, so we leave the room... We go create more consequences, and then we come back to the room with the same consequences we couldn't deal with to begin with, with the additional consequences on top of it, and then we wonder what we're doing. So, so we have to understand pain. Say pain. pain. So, so where are you at with this pain, Galatians 4? Jesus has to be formed in you. Check this out. Dear children, from whom again I'm at the pain of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. It's painful for our family to watch if what we're going to do. Painful to see if God is going to be formed in you, if Jesus is going to be formed in you, if you're going to birth a new life. they got to sit back and put their life on hold to wonder what you're going to do. I am done with that life. I'm done with that life where my mom can only sleep when I'm in jail. I'm done with it. Our detox. I mean, the only time they could, they were up worrying every night. My kid's up worrying every night. The only time they could rest is when I was in jail. So it's painful for our loved ones um, to sit back to watch this stuff form in us to give birth. How I wish I could be with you now, this is Paul talking, and change my tone. Because I am perplexed about you. It's painful for people to sit back and watch us say we're going to work a program and not work it. It perplexes people. For us to make empty promises and never fulfill them, that we're going to get a sponsor, we're going to go to our meetings, we're going to be of service. It perplexes people and God, but God still works with us. But they're waiting for us to, to deal with this pain that has made us use all these years. Job 6.10, you stay the course in spite of your pain. When you stay the course of recovery in spite of your pain, you watch God burst something out of you. 
then I would still have this consolation, my joy and unrelenting pain. Even though you're weeping in the evening, may joy come in the morning. I have found more joy in my pain than I could have ever found without the pain. I'm grateful to God for that. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. See, a lot of us are chasing happiness. Happiness with this, that, him, her, jobs, cars, whatever. I mean, your car can break down. You can get fired next week, and she can leave you tomorrow. So if your happiness is based on things, but if your joy is based on God, then, then deny my words. So no matter what you do and how you feel, you're going to stay in these rooms. John 16, when you give birth, all the pain had served a purpose. I want you to think about that. A woman that goes through you know, eight to nine, eight to ten, eight to nine months worth of pregnancy, it's painful. But when that baby's birth, it was worth it. And the same is true with spiritual development. You're going to have to walk through the pain in order to birth what God has for you. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. Say, my time has come. <laughs> See, I believe your time has come. I believe that you're here tonight for a reason that you need to birth this thing and you're going to have to walk through the pain, emotional, physical, mental. But it says her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets about the anguish. You don't even have a clue how much anguish has gone into 15 years of this recovery program. You don't have a clue on how much anguish we had to walk through to birth a church. To go do 12-step calls, to to watch my children sit back and understand, Dad, I need you, I need you, need you to know I love you, but I understand why you got to go to that meeting or you got to go help that guy or whatever. It's painful. But when this thing's birthed, you'll forget about all the pain it took to birth it. When you get free, when you have joy, when you operate in his love and all the pain it will take you to get to that place, you're going to be like, I forgot about all the anguish because I'm free. I forget about all the long nights. Look at what God has done. And that's what the Bible's saying. The anguish because of their joy, the child was born in the world. John 3, the spirit is what births greatness in you. It's the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. In order to birth something in your life, you have to be born again. And some of us tonight haven't experienced that. I've done this twice in 15 years. God just told me to do it again. We're going to do it differently. Some of you have not been reborn again in order to birth the Jesus in you. So with every head bowed, keep your head bowed, eyes closed. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. You don't have to come up here or nothing. Just raise your hand. There's hands all over this place. And you, I want you to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, everyone, dear Jesus, I repent. I ask for forgiveness of all the things that I've done. Dear Jesus, I'm here tonight because I believe in you. I don't know why, but there's something in me that believes in you. Dear Jesus, I repent. I believe that you rose again for me. And I believe because you rose again, I can rise again out of the muck of my consequences through you. Dear Jesus, I'm willing to walk through the pain with you. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Hosea 13, the time has come to come out of the womb. Now that you've said that prayer, God can birth something in and through you. Pains of the woman in childbirth come to him. But he is a child without wisdom. When the time arrives, he doesn't have sense to come out of the womb. 
when God gives you that opportunity to burst something in your life, first, make sure you have a mentor to run by whatever you think God told you. If you're anything like me, bipolar, confused, and just got out of the psych ward, but I think I'm hearing from God. That isn't the, I needed to run it by my mentor. I'm just speaking about me now, not you, don't trip. Because God answers a problem with a person. So we need to have sense to come out of the womb. Isaiah 9, 6, it's time for Jesus to come out of you. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. Stop trying to carry your pain by yourself. Give it to Jesus. And it goes on to call who Jesus is. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting father. And he's the prince of peace. But here's the real thing. Here's the real thing. If you are willing to know how to walk through this pain, and now that you got Jesus with you, he will carry it with you and for you. But here's what I love. Once it's birthed, many people will rejoice. He will be a joy, talking, he will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth. Once Jesus is birthed in you, you, he in you is going to birth something out of you. But he will not birth something out of you for his people unless you understand the process of pain. You're going to have to walk through the pain to birth the very thing that God has placed in you to help his people. And once you walk through the pain of giving birth of the program, the church, the ministry, then you're going to face pain that you never faced. But the preparation of the pain of birth prepares you for the preparation of the pain of walking in the promise. I'm here to tell you, that I say this with humility, because it ain't me, it's him. Tens of thousands of people have been blessed because I was willing to walk through the pain and birth this ministry. What are you willing to do? Don't hate on me. It ain't me, it's him. It's him. It ain't me. It ain't me. Now, that is the greatest gift you can ever give anybody, letting Jesus be birthed out of you. Tonight as we close, if you make a commitment to walk through the pain, no matter what, I need you at this altar. Come all the way up here. You don't have to be an addict to deal with pain. Look at all the pain walking up here. It's pain. Man, I look at all these soldiers, these warriors. It's incredible, absolutely incredible, willing to walk through whatever the pain may look like. Whatever will pay. And I, and I say this, man, if God can use a crackhead like me, he can certainly use you. You're smarter than me. You're more talented than me. You carry more charisma and heart than me. And I'm man enough to say it. I hug you and meet you. You got something special that's inside of you that needs to be birthed from in to out. And I'm here to tell you, it's painful. But I'm telling you, everyone that I've met is grateful, the majority of them, even my haters, whatever. You're going to have haters. Hold your hands up. Surrender to him. Let's talk to him real quick. However you do. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I surrender my pain. I believe when I give you my pain, it will turn into purpose. Dear Jesus, 
show me my purpose within the pain. Dear Jesus, thank you for saving me from myself. There's an anointing in this place right now. You made a decision to come here tonight. We had more people than I thought would come. I want to tell you on behalf of God that God is proud of you, that God believes in you, that God will carry the pain with and for you. And tonight, there's a birthing going on here, and I look forward to hearing what it is that he births in and through you in the coming days, months, and years, whatever it do, just walk through the process. But I love you, your family to me. This is me. Me is not Sunday morning from the pulpit. That's just part of my calling. Me is hanging around a bunch of people like me that should be dead or in prison, that have chosen life. And because you chose life, others will live. And that is what purpose is. That's all it is. May God richly bless you and yours on this Christmas season, and thank you for enhancing my life tonight. God bless you. Merry Christmas.